Activision Blizzard doesn't give a shit about its players. It only cares about money. That's an obvious enough statement, but actions speak louder than words with the recent happenings in both the Hearthstone and Call of Duty gaming franchises. Hashtag Boycott Blizzard was trending on Twitter yesterday and is still trending as of the recording of this video after Blizzard announced that a pro Hearthstone player, Blitzchung, has been banned for one year and will not receive any prize money from the current Grandmaster Season 2 that he's already earned after the player shouted a phrase in support of the Hong Kong Pro Protests against the authoritarian Chinese government during an interview with two casters who, in spite of ducking out of frame and quickly cutting to a commercial break following the statement, also had their contracts voided with Blizzard. Blizzard's supercalifragilisticexpial atrocious rationale behind the punishment stems from tournament rules that are more vague than RuPaul's gender pronoun, whereby they could punish players at their sole discretion for, quote, engaging in any act that brings you into public disrespute, offends a portion or group of the public, or otherwise damages damages Blizzard's image. In this case, the offending party is the Chinese government, who is known for their censorship and not only individual expression, but also have a giant fuck off filter on the internet itself that their citizens can access. Now, I can understand companies not wanting people that are sponsored by them to wade into politics because it can get very messy very quickly. However, Blizzard said in its statement that it stands by one's right to express individual thoughts and opinions, but you need to follow the rules, which is a completely contradictory contradictory statement. By silencing someone that is actively speaking out against the very same forms of oppression that Blizzard is then turning around and employing is hilariously ironic, Alanis Morissette, and shows that Blizzard cares more about the Chinese money and its access to market share for a huge swath of potential gamers because, as seen with the recent blacklisting of South Park by China for making comments that disparage the country's government, you're going to be cut off unless you act swiftly in taking the side of an authoritarian regime instead of freedom of expression. The prospect of having Hearthstone being put on Santa's naughty list, akin to the Comedy Central show, thus losing out on huge amounts of potential revenue from the game because it won't be available in China, is why Blizzard was quick to act in a similar fashion to the NBA, even though it makes their brand look bad because they're punishing its ambassadors and even innocent bystanders in the case of the casters who had their contracts terminated, even though they did absolutely nothing wrong in the situation in favor of a totalitarian-esque regime in China. Blizzard doesn't give a shit about the players of their game, they only care about the money, and it's recalculous that people that don't even live in China must either self-censor or face suspensions and forfeiture of money that they've already earned. However, its fans and even some of its own employees could see right through this bending of the knee bullshittery with calls for boycotting its games, uninstalling the awfulness that is Battle.net, and even covering up slogans on the statue outside of its headquarters like Every Voice Counts by disgruntled employees in the wake of the actions from the corporation. Similarly, tons of pre-orders for Call of Duty Modern Warfare were canceled in the wake of its subtle announcement via an almost impossible to read fine print that the survival mode of the Spec Ops co-op portion of the game is going to be exclusive to the PlayStation 4 console until October 1st of 2020 when the game will be basically out of its life cycle for the Xbox and PC players to enjoy because the other half of Activision Blizzard, of course, also doesn't give a shit about its players, only money with this Sony exclusivity deal. I was waiting until yesterday's Spec Op announced because I figured that there might have been further clarification on the one-year exclusivity because I didn't know if this meant that the game would be updated earlier on the PS4 versus the VCR and PC like Black Ops 4 did for its first year or if it was legit a missing piece of the game that Activision has the nerve to charge those platforms the same full price for not a full offering. But nope, no additional clarification, the survival mode wasn't anywhere near the official trailer that dropped, and there wasn't anything said about it other than a comment on a Reddit thread to confirm that it's not coming for non-PS4 owners until 2020. Now, the idea with a Sony exclusivity deal is that Sony will pay Activision money in order to receive benefits for users of their platform in an attempt to coerce people to buy a PS4 instead of its competition, the Xbox One, so that they can gain market share by screwing over a segment of gamers for money, but this one year lock behind a corporate paywall for part of the game, Spec Ops Survival, that, by the way, is what basically all of the Zombies YouTubers would have probably been doing had it not been for this fuckery, is a whole new level of douche canoe for Activision to stoop to. Since crossplay is a thing this year, it throws a monkey wrench into the whole PS4 gets shit early, let's not divide the player base mantra that they keep beating, so instead of placating Sony by just saying, look, the Call of Duty esports scene is relegated to that console only, that's good enough for people that want to 
WWE athletes have to buy your console instead of a PC like every other competitive FPS game on the planet, Activision decided that they needed another incentive for the Sony exclusivity, and that's why we have this garbage where a game mode isn't going to happen for two-thirds of the platforms until after the game is basically out of its one-year life cycle. Here's a newsflash for you. Nobody except the most dumb shit of fuck trumpets is going to run out and buy a PS4 because there's a game mode that's only available on that console for a year head start. It's simply it's not going to fucking happen, especially with the news that the PS5 is going to be available in about a year's time anyway. So why the fuck would Activision ever think this is a good use of Sony's money while simultaneously pissing off your fan base? It's a bad idea all around, and it's even worse that nobody from the company is out there defending this bullshit. It's instead thrown back at the feet of developers that can't talk about things like how the microtransaction systems will be because everybody knows that it's also going to make people mad so instead they're going to shove them into the game after it's been launched with reviews written and the majority of revenue has been collected so i'm sorry joel even though in your reddit post you want us to focus on the 411 that's actually fact instead of rumors when you guys are silent about things that affect our decision on whether or not to purchase a game we're going to go with the quote boogeyman that's been a reliable source on leaks up to this point over the Simon and Garfunkel sound of silence from Activision Infinity Ward. You know how you dispel these rumors that you hate happening? You actually talk about the things that the community is interested in instead of throwing out generic platitudes like We're focused on making a different system in modern warfare, one with a direct path to content for players. Which means fuck all at the current moment because one could say that about Black Ops 4's microtransaction system. It was different with the contraband stream and it did offer a direct path to content for players but then tons of it later on was locked in RNG boxes after the fact and Black Ops 4's monetization system was the worst in Call of Duty history for consumers but it made Activision the most amount of money so have a wild fucking guess as to which type of scheme that we think that they're going to favor. The track record of your parent company isn't on your side even if Infinite Warfare the best monetization scheme of the three to have Monty for Call of Duty. Activision has shown for years now that they don't give a shit about the people that play their game they only care about the fucking money they don't care that some of their fan base is getting an inferior product as long as co as long as sony keeps spending on them like a drunken sailor coming home to port activision blizzard's bottom line isn't making great games for their fans it's about making all of the money in the world for their investors and these latest fiascos for both portions of the same twat waffle corporation cement this fact i've canceled my pre-order for modern warfare and instead migrated my destiny 2 character to steam as a big fuck you to activision blizzard i'd rather spend my time playing games from companies that actually give a shit about their fans instead of bowing down to the almighty power of the dollar what do you think about the recent controversies with activision blizzard i've been the schwanz 27 i like the minnesota twins until next time